Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Byron Scott. Glad you could join us tonight. Well, Governor Larry Hogan is weighing in on allegations of sex abuse by a Prince George's County school bus driver. At least one special education student was allegedly molested. The bus was carrying students from James Ryder Randall School in Clinton. The alleged abuse was reported in May. Police say they were notified in June. Parents and the school board are angry that they just found out a few days ago. Now, the governor is urging officials to do all they can to help protect the children. Well, uh, we're outraged by what's going on. Um, we've reached out to uh, the county executive to uh, see what kind of action he plans on taking. We haven't heard back from him yet. Um, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're hesitant to have the state kind of interfere with uh, what's going on at the local level, but we, we are paying very close attention to it and, and trying to make sure that uh, some action is going to be taken. And at another school, parents at Sylvania Woods Elementary are angered and want answers as to why administrators announced the new principal there was placed on leave. This is the same school where an aide allegedly videoed students performing sex acts. And a six-month-old baby is fighting for his life tonight after he was found suffering from a fractured skull and broken ribs in Capitol Heights. The boy's step-grandfather, 48-year-old Lenwood Pierce, is now charged with first- and second-degree child abuse. The infant's father was running late and asked his mother's husband to pick up the baby from child care. Police say, that, say Pearson was the only person home at the time. The activist group CASA opposes local legislation that would lower the number of inspections for housing complexes in Montgomery County. Bill number 1915 would require the Department of Housing to inspect residential rental units once every three years. CASA says this is an insult to the seven people who died last month in the Flower Branch apartment explosion. The measure was originally introduced back in 2015 by Councilmember Mark Elrich. A committee meeting was held today in Rockville to discuss the matter. A well-known community activist is being remembered for his impact here in Prince George's County. Sylvester Vons helped integrate local schools and his family says he never stopped fighting for people. Denise Douglas has more on his life and legacy. Olivia Vons remembers her father. Well, his whole thing was when he would be get back in his truck and drive his truck again for himself. In this picture, his smile captivates her, but she thinks back on much more. He was a hard-working man, God-fearing man, a real family man, and he loved his community. He loved In 1966, Sylvester Vons had just moved to Palmer Park. It was a time when black families were moving in and whites were moving out. The exodus did little to integrate the public schools. Mr. Vons wasn't happy. He felt the education system was not fair the way it was, and so not only did he talk about it, but he took a stance on it. He took on the Prince George's School Board to force change, but got nowhere. Eventually, as the president of the NAACP, he filed a lawsuit against the county. The result, black students were bused to white schools and vice versa. His daughter says it made a difference in her education. I believe that was very important because of the fact that when we as the student, as his children, we were in the school system, and when they started busing the schools I had been in and then the schools I went to was very different. The science equipment was far better than what I had seen in my other school. The books were better. You know, we were tore up books. These were like fresh books. It's always been important because he was someone who was constantly stressing education for us and everyone around the neighborhood. His granddaughter says he taught her the importance of fighting for a cause. Over the years, Mr. Vons received numerous awards, some seen here in his house, for his community work. Growing up in it, it didn't always seem, from the background, it always seemed like, well, that's what everybody does, because that's all we ever knew for him. But as I grew older and kind of left this area, he stressed the importance of being able to use your voice, use your platform, you know, speak out on things. So every time I have an opportunity with the things that's happening current day, it's always about just having the conversation. And he was big on talk about it, bring it up, make sure it's a consistent thing that people are hearing about because that's the only way the change will come. Unfortunately, he couldn't win his battle with cancer. He died at the age of 81 on September 10th. And though his family will never see his beaming smile again, both Alexandra and her mom are glad that his work will live on. I've been a strong black man who supported his family through all of it. I mean, because there was times when, I guess when the bus and stuff was going on, when 
Ku Klux Klan would call the house. They would threaten to, you know, put cross in our yard, and he stood strong. Denise Douglas, CTV News. In addition to his community work, Sylvester Vons held a number of jobs with the county government. He was also appointed to the planning board in 2003. A viewing for him will be held at 10 a.m. Saturday at Hemingway Memorial AME Church in District Heights. The funeral service will be at 11 o'clock. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Byron Scott.